This episode is brought to you by Cox Home Life. Cox helps make your home smarter. And now you can pull up your Home Life cameras on your TV with your Contour voice remote and some simple voice commands. To learn more, visit cox.com slash this is home. This is the Marketing Podcast Network. Want Instagrammers and YouTubers to mention your brand? Or do you want to influence an audience to buy your product? I'm Jason Falls, author of the book, Winfluence, reframing influencer marketing to ignite your brand. In this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate the difference between using influencers and actually influencing. Welcome to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. My pal Seth Goldstein asked an interesting question on Twitter last week. He posed this, is podcasting just a form of busking? For those who don't know, busking is a term used mostly in Britain to describe street musicians and performers. The root of the definition is people who perform publicly for tips. Seth is not only a friend, but one of my fellow Marketing Podcast Network hosts and creators, so I chimed in. My response was quick, but I think accurate and definitive. I said, certainly not. Podcast listening is opt-in and on-demand. Busking would be pushing your podcast through a loudspeaker system and blasting it to people who didn't ask for it. Tanner Campbell disagreed on Twitter and then devoted an entire episode of his show podcasting sucks to arguing against my position. He called me out and picked apart my answer in a good old-fashioned social media throwdown. Perhaps Tanner doesn't realize that the first time I came to anyone's attention on the internet, I posted a scathing review of a social media conference by calling out the speakers there I thought did the attendees an injustice. The dais included Rand Fishkin of Moz, Danny Sullivan, Neil Patel, and many others considered luminaries then and now. And I stood my ground, which is incidentally why I started getting invited to speak at conferences rather than attend them. That's right, Tanner. I was kicking stuff up on the social medias before you had facial hair. You poked the bear, son. I'll respond to Tanner's rebuke in today's commentary, which, for the record, will be presented in a satirical caricature for fun. This is, after all, as Tanner put it, a silly topic. So, I'll be silly with it. Before we get to that, let's visit with a customer of Tagger, our presenting sponsor, to see how they use the complete influencer marketing platform. Meredith Jacobson is an independent influencer marketing consultant who is a big fan of the platform. We chatted not long ago about how she uses Tagger. How confident are you in the information that you're getting about these uh, influencers on Tagger, especially with regard to understanding whether or not you're looking at influencer fraud, fake followers, et cetera? I think it's the first line of defense. Um, And so I appreciate the tools that they have, the ability to filter for brand safety and to see the percentage of authentic and inauthentic audience um, and you know, it's just sort of a nice, it's a nice indicator. I also like the the growth metrics of being able to see that a creator is one of the fastest growing, um, either in a time period or in a category. And I think that's a really strong indication of content health that I, I certainly trust from Tagger. I would assume that you would recommend Tagger to other people. You bet. Thanks to Meredith for sharing her use of Tagger. You can find her online at weareboosters.com. To learn more about Tagger and get a demo to see if the platform is right for you, just visit jason.online slash tagger today. That's jason.online slash tagger. Tanner Campbell came after me and my defense of podcasting as not busking. My response is next on Winfluence. This episode is brought to you by Wix. Are you ready to take your business online? You need Wix, the leading website creation platform that's got all the tools you need to create, manage, and grow your brand. Over 200 million people are already using Wix's wide range of solutions to enhance their businesses, like ultra-smart SEO tools designed to get you found on search engines, faster loading times to create outstanding user experiences, and payment solutions to help you boost your revenue. Plus, with enterprise-grade security built into every site, you know you're in safe hands. 
So whether you're starting your online business or you've got a side hustle, with Wix, you can design a site to showcase your work that'll look great on any device. You can also manage everything from one dashboard on desktop and mobile, so you can be available anywhere at any time. In the office, at home, or on the go. Want to get started? Head over to Wix.com and create your website today. That's Wix.com. Is podcasting a form of busking? Simple question, simple answer. Hell no. Tanner Campbell disagrees. Okay. According to his unprompted podcast attack on my wisdom and credibility, Tanner Campbell defined a busker from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. His reading stated that a busker is, quote, a person who entertains in a public space for donations. His own example of a busker again announced in a blatant attempt to discredit my lengthy vitae of experience was someone on a street corner playing guitar and collecting nickels and dimes in the open instrument case. Campbell says there's a lot of similarity in that and podcasting. He then pulls one of my favorite tricks in the modern social media person's bag of shenanigans. He rightfully reports he's been podcasting since 2010 and claims back then no one used podcasts for internet marketing, relationship marketing, or for the establishment of their authority on a given topic. He implies, way back in the beginnings of podcasting time, podcasts were only used for artistic endeavors. Isn't he cute? I thought about calling Christopher Penn to chime in on this, but then I remembered all I need to do is drop marketing over coffee and send everyone to look up when it started. That was March of 2007. The Jack and Stint show started around the same time in Southern California. It charged people $5 to subscribe. Oh, and it lasted for 12 years. Oh, and Marketing Over Coffee began a couple of years after Penn, Chris Brogan, and many others started podcasting conferences to help people figure out how to use audio for business. I'll forgive Tanner here. He came to podcasting after the first wave ebbed a bit. And though I don't know exactly how old Tanner is, his name is Tanner, so I'm reading the context clues. His generation of social media users loves to claim long-in-the-tooth status. Why, just last month, I spoke to an influencer marketing software company whose founder said she launched such an innovative new business on the marketplace because nothing like it existed way back in 2013. I called Ted Murphy and we laughed and laughed and laughed. Isaiah began in 2006. Not long ago, some young upstart was rattling off his experience on social networks. He said Facebook was the first social network out loud, and wasn't joking. Children, children, children. One can see how Tanner's definition of podcasting as a purely artistic endeavor leads him to believe that the craft is akin to busking, but his logic is only accurate if buskers are the only type of musician in existence on the planet. The definition of busking includes the requirement that the person be performing for donations. Sure, Patreon and online tip jars exist and are put to use by some podcasters, including Tanner. But I'm willing to gamble for every one that relies on tips and donations, there are five that sell advertising, deeper content, consulting, or other services. In other words, there are musicians that do not perform on street corners. Most even go indoors. And buckle up, Tanner. Many even record their music and offer it to others to enjoy privately and on demand. That disqualifies them from being buskers, by the way. Tanner also says that pure podcasting is when the podcast is the product. Pure busking, then, I assume, is when the live music is the product, but herein lies the other snag with his perspective. Podcasts are only consumed by people who want to consume them. No one is forced to hear a podcast. No podcaster sits up on a street corner and pipes their opinions or storytelling prowess into an amplifier. If they sat there without the aid of equipment, they wouldn't be podcasting, they'd be talking to the pigeons. And as we walked by, we would avoid eye contact and hold on to our wallets and purses a little tighter. 
I think Tanner knows I'm right here, friends. He begins his argument in earnest by saying, and I quote, We show up to this arguably public place. Yes, but iTunes is not the corner of third and desperation. One must at least have an email address to get in, and then there's the whole not broadcasting the drivel to everyone with an earshot part. Tanner's delusion of pure podcasting then goes crazy for Cocoa Puffs and claims that podcast listeners and producers assume there is no commercial exchange in this whole thing. Yet most podcasts are media properties with advertising. If you want to get rid of them, subscribe, which is, I'm told, a commercial exchange. He says podcasters are a form of starving artists. Tanner, have you seen me? I can assure you, my friend, there is no starving happening on this end. Yes, there are podcasts out there that are as pure as the driven snow. No ads, no asks. But again, they're not screamed at us while we stand in line for coffee. Tanner then begins to dissect my original answer to Seth Goldstein's question, is podcasting just a form of busking? To review, my answer was, certainly not. Podcast listening is opt-in and on-demand. Busking would be pushing your podcast through a loudspeaker system and blasting it to people who don't ask for it. Tanner implies that by that, I mean I do not appreciate buskers singing to me as I walk down the street. He's right. I do not. I did not ask you for your acoustic rendition of Hungry Like the Wolf. I do not appreciate your attempt to sing like Christina Aguilera in a manner that can only be described as a drunken turkey yodel. I cannot avoid a busker. That art is what I call of the ambush variety. I can avoid a podcast. In fact, there are many that I do. I produce two podcasts. I don't ask for donations. I don't even own a guitar case. I'm beginning to think that Tanner Campbell just wants to be a busker. His podcast is titled Podcasting Sucks. I'm certain most buskers would say the same about busking, not podcasting. They clearly don't know anything about podcasting or they'd come in from the cold. Well, Tanner Campbell, allow me to invite you to live your dream. Take your next podcast script down to the local strip mall. Heck, you can even take your microphone as a prop. Lay out your empty instrument case. Be sure to seed a few dollars in change so people get the hint. Then recite your pithy tome to anyone within earshot. But if you wish to avoid those around you thinking you're batshit crazy, take along a tambourine. A podcast set to percussive rhythm forced upon those around you? Why, that, my friend, makes you a busker. Big thanks to Tanner Campbell for playing along and poking the bear, and to Seth Goldstein for the inspiration. That was fun. I hope everyone understood the sarcasm and knows we're all just being silly. Do subscribe to Tanner's great podcast at podcastingsucks.com. Seth Goldstein hosts both Entrepreneur's Enigma and Digital Marketing Dive, both of which can be found on the Marketing Podcast Network along with Winfluence. Find all those shows at marketingpodcasts.net. But hey, let's keep it going. Is podcasting just a form of busking? Let me know what you think. Record a voice memo and send it via email or just send a regular email to jason at jasonfalls.com. I may use your comment on a future episode. Have a question or topic related to influence or influence marketing you'd like my take on? Inspire an episode by emailing me at that same address, jason at jasonfalls.com. I may use your question as a show topic. If I do, I'll send you a signed copy of Winfluence the book as a thank you. Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast, is presented by my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my monthly newsletter or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.